Hello, everyone, and welcome to another mini sky tonight. So I wanted to show you folks some of the constellations and planets and things that you can see throughout the month of January, especially one particular unique event that's occurring on tonight on January 12th that the news media has presented throughout most of this weekend. It's this event right over here. If you look towards the southwest, just shortly after sunset, you'll get to see three planets in a line. Now, the news media has been calling it the next conjunction, but when I think of a conjunction, I think of when the two planets are close enough together where they look like a single star, or they're on top of one another. That's not the case. In this particular case, I call it an alignment because it looks like the three planets are in a line with one another, and they're relatively close. So towards the southwest tonight, roughly shortly after sunset, you'll get to see the planets Mercury, Jupiter, and Saturn. They're gonna be kind of a little hard to see because you're looking towards the glare of the setting sun, but as the sun starts to slowly set, you should be able to start picking out those three individual planets. If you have a pair of binoculars or a small telescope, I definitely recommend checking out these three unique planets. The gas giant planets will be easier to see compared to Mercury, but still, you get to see three awesome planets. All right, let's progress the night forward to show you some of the other constellations and planets that you can see throughout the month of January. So the planetarium program I'm using is called Stellarium. It is a free planetarium program that you can download on your computer for free to use to learn about the nighttime sky, all the different constellations, some of the unique objects and everything that you can see. I highly recommend downloading it because I know I enjoy using it as a reference for when I go out and about looking at the nighttime sky. And I can't pull up Digistar, which is the planetarium program that runs in the planetarium. Also, you can download it for your mobile phone. So it allows you to be able to take Stellarium on your mobile phone. I just like using it on my computer because I'm a little more comfortable using Stellarium on my computer. Also, they add a bunch of updates. So if you recently added Stellarium onto your computer, be sure to check their website now and there for recent updates because they sometimes fix bugs as well as added new features. So be sure to check out their website for updates. But let's progress the night forward to see what the sky will look like. All right, if you look over here towards the Western sky and you roughly around about 30 degrees above the horizon, you'll see this kind of square shaped constellation in the sky. This is usually an autumn constellation, but since we're in the early evening part of the sky and we're into pretty close to midwinter, we get to see some of the autumn constellations. This is the constellation Pegasus, the cosmic winged horse. In fact, let's bring up the constellation lines up here. So, I mean, this is what the constellation looks like, but I really don't see a phenomenal cosmic winged horse that the Greeks and the Romans thought they saw. To me, I see a great baseball diamond in the sky. Kind of like what the cowboy poet Baxter Black called it. And you kind of can see a baseball diamond out of this. Think of it kind of like an American commemoration to the all-American pastime. Because here's home, here's first, Here's second, here's third. Oh, that little floating star, that's a satellite. So yes, you can even put in satellites on this program and you can toggle them on and off if you wish. So if I toggle it off, as you see, it disappears. But I keep them on because I honestly think it's really cool. So if you wanna track the International Space Station as well as, hey, what's that floating star over there that's not flashing green and red that is usually an airplane? Well. Chances are you can track it with this. Nonetheless, back to the constellation Pegasus. So here you have home, first, second, third. Here you got the pitcher. You got the catcher and the umpire. A couple of guys hanging out of the dugout and the shortstop. So to me, I see a baseball diamond. But that's the great thing about asterisms. Asterisms are nicknames for groups of stars. Many people think, oh, the constellations really look weird. Well, give it an asterism, give it a nickname that works for you. Because you can have 
the whole world of asterisms, but there's sadly only a official set of constellations, but call it what you will, whatever works for you to help you navigate the stars. And speaking of helping you, allow me to show you a way of finding a really unique object. So going to Pegasus, if you go from home and you go to first, if you run past the right fielder and run past the center fielder and leave the stadium, you run into this fuzzy patch right here. That fuzzy patch is the Andromeda galaxy, our sister galaxy, which is 2.5 million light years away. It's quite a long distance. In fact, I have a video over here, if you're really interested in checking it out, about why we use different distances in astronomy, because space is big. So that video over there will explain all the different distances we use. So this is the farthest thing you can see with your unaided eye. So let's take a look at it. Beautiful, isn't it? It's a spiral galaxy and it's called our sister galaxy because it's one of the closest large galaxies to us. Many of the other galaxies that we have seen with our telescopes are much, much farther away. Also, we call it our sister galaxy because she's similar in size to our Milky Way galaxy. Now, yes, there has been theories that the Andromeda galaxy and the Milky Way galaxy are said to merge, but fortunately that won't happen for another several billion years. So trust me, it is the least of your worries right now. This little fuzzy patch that's right underneath the Andromeda galaxy is M33 and it is a dwarf galaxy. Forgive me, M32. Now the term M means Messier. There was a French astronomer named Charles Messier who wanted to find a comet because Halley discovered his comet and it's a comet that comes back around every 76 years and everybody wanted to get their own comet. So he was searching for the skies desperately to hopefully find a comet. And he came across these unique objects in the sky that were constant throughout the entire month or year and that they didn't change, they didn't move. And so he tracked and basically created this list of, this is not a comet. Well, it's his famous, this is not a comet list that became famous with astronomy. Today, we call it the Messier object list. So hence why it has the designation of M, meaning Messier object number 31, which is the Andromeda galaxy, and M32, that little fuzzy right next to it, is also a Messier object. It's a dwarf galaxy that goes in orbit around the Andromeda galaxy. So you get to see two galaxies in one field of view if you have a good sized telescope. Okay. So we checked out the Andromeda galaxy. So what other unique things can we see? If you look straight up on the southwest towards south, you'll see a bright red star right smack in the middle of the sky. That is the planet Mars. So you can even see four planets in one evening, which is really cool, but you got to catch it, the first three just as the sun sets. All right, now let's look at some of the wintertime constellations. So that was a fun late fall constellation. Now let's look at early winter into midwinter constellations. So let's progress the time forward to roughly around about eight o'clock tonight. So over here towards the southeast, you'll see this famous constellation that many people know for the three stars in a row that form his belt. This is Orion, the mighty hunter. There are two bright stars in the constellation Orion, this one and this one, as you can tell. But notice those stars have color. Many people think, oh, all stars are blue, but in actuality, they have different colors because color is an indicator of temperature. Think of it kind of like the furnace, uh, like a stove, like an electric stove and or like some of the coils that you can see on electric heaters. The deeper in red, the cooler you are in temperature. 
the brighter you are in temperature, the hotter you are. So as you progress from red to orange to yellow, the hotter you get. Same thing with stars. And stars, they can get really, really, really hot. Now, orange and red stars are relatively cool compared to the sun versus blue and white stars, they're really hot compared to the sun. Like several billions of degrees hotter than the sun. That, that should say something. So this kind of orange star here, which is a relatively cool star in terms of temperature, is the star Betelgeuse. I know many people mispronounce it as Betelgeuse, but no, notice it only has one E right after the B. So like the word bet, so bet L, so Betelgeuse. This bottom right star here is called Rigel. So now you know a couple of different star names. Hidden within the constellation Orion is another unique object. So let's bring up the constellation lines again. And right underneath Orion's belt, like any good mighty hunter, he has a dagger or a sword hanging by his side. Hidden within a sword is a really unique object, not, not the satellite. So if you have a pair of binoculars or a small telescope, check in then on this object right here. It's sometimes hard to get in on those deep sky objects because sometimes it clicks on the area that's relatively close to it. So sometimes you have to zoom in on the object. And the way you can do that is just use your scroll wheel to zoom in. And if you wanna put it in the center of your field of view, you have these four little arrows that basically say, put it towards the center of my screen. And that will make it easier to zoom in. So here we have this beautiful fuzzy figure in the sky that you can see with a pair of binoculars or a small telescope. It is called the Great Orion Nebula. It's a stellar nursery. And in, within this nebula, as you can see right within here, those little stars are baby stars. This is where stars are forming and even planets. So what do I mean by that? Believe it or not, the same materials that was used to create our sun can be found inside this nebula. So star and planet formation go hand in hand. Whatever was used to create the star is also used to create the planet. So whatever was used to create our sun was also used to create our planet Earth. So the, every element on the periodic table of elements can be found inside a nebula. So we're but such stuff that stars are made out of. And I honestly think that's really cool. But it's also another Messier object, as denoted by its name. It's M42. It is the 42nd object on the Charles Messier list. There's this other fun nebula over here, but you can't really see it with your unaided eye or a pair of binoculars or a small telescope, but it's still a really cool nebula. And if you look online for different pictures from like Hubble, it is a really beautiful one. It's known as the Horsehead Nebula. But I wanted to show you at least the Orion one because you can definitely see it with a pair of binoculars or a small telescope. Nonetheless, let's take Orion's belt to find a couple of different constellations. If you take Orion's belt and go up and to the right, you'll see this V-shaped group of stars right here. This forms the face of Taurus the bull. This bright star is the brightest star in the constellation Taurus, which is called Aldebaran. Hidden back behind Taurus is this little cluster of stars right here, which is also another Messier object, but it does go by several different names. It goes by the Seven Sisters, the Seven Indian Maidens, the Seven Little Eyes of Manarihi, the Pleiades, or Subaru. So let's zoom in on it. And you kind of can see the Subaru emblem on there, can't you? Because Subaru is Japanese for the Pleiades. So the Subaru Vehicle Company gets their inspiration from the stars. Right. If you take Orion's belt and go down this time, 
you'll see this incredibly bright star. It is the brightest star in the nighttime sky and it is called Sirius. So for you Harry Potter fans out there, Sirius Black gets his name from this star. In fact, many of the characters from the Black family get their names from different stars. So if you are really cognitive and looking very carefully in the videos and you see the, the Black family tree in one of the Harry Potter videos, Look very carefully and you get to notice that all the different names are star names. That's what I always think is a fun little Easter egg in those videos. Nonetheless, the bright star Sirius is in the constellation Canis Major, the big dog. And I always like this constellation because I see a dog. I actually do compared to these weird creatures or human beings that don't quite fit the stars. This actually kind of does look like a stick figure dog and I always enjoy it. So you can kind of see the head, his legs over here, his tail, here's his body and he's the bright star Sirius is supposed to be as like a color gem or something. All right one more constellation. So if you take these two stars in Orion, Rigel and Betelgeuse, and follow them up in a straight line, you run into these two identical stick figures right here. I know, identical stick figures, but they kind of do look like two people holding hands because they represent Gemini, the twins. And the heads of the twins are the names of the particular twins. So the two stars at the heads of these twins are their names. So here's Pollux, and here's Castor. Those are the names of the twins. So if you ever get a chance of looking up Jason and the Argonauts, th this is their area where they shine. All right, let's progress into the early morning because I know some people like early morning risers and they have to get up really early to go to work. So let's take a look at the sky right before the sun rises and see if we can see a couple of unique objects. Oop, sorry. As the sun starts to rise. So let's take out the constellation lines. So if you face towards the eastern sky, close to sunrise, you'll start to see this bright star on the horizon. That's actually the planet Venus. So if you wanna get a chance to see up to five different planets, in the early evening and after the sun sets, check out Mars and the three planets close together. And in the early morning, the next day, as you start to get up, check out Venus on the eastern horizon. So those are some of the planets, constellations, and deep sky objects you can see for the month of January. If you have any questions or comments, leave it down in the comments below. If there's a topic you would love for me to cover over, leave it down in the comments as well. And until next time, stay safe, stay healthy, and as always, never stop learning.